Hey guys, Erman Hamidovich coming to you from the official Overtake YouTube channel, bringing you the first tutorial with, well, me. R Factor 2 is a well established simulator in the sim racing world. Following the game's release in 2012, it gained a high number of fans who meticulously follow the game's path. However, compared to other sims like Assetto Corsa or iRacing, the accessibility of R Factor 2 pales a bit in comparison. For many players, the first hours of playing R Factor 2 are spent figuring out the menus and options to have a fun race. That is why we'll talk about how to set up R Factor 2 so that you are free to race however you feel like and have no hurdles that hinder your sim racing experience. Okay, so this is how the R Factor 2 UI boots up for the very first time after the packages are done updating for you. What we'll want to do is click on the cog icon in the top right corner to get started. We'll click on the graphics settings option to make the game look its very best. For window mode, you want to set it to either full screen or borderless window. Your resolution, you want to be the native resolution of your particular monitor. The refresh rate, you'll want to be the maximum refresh rate of your monitor. Vertical sync, I would advise keeping off in order to minimize input lag. Post effects on Ultra in order to get all of those really nice depth of field effects on the external shots. That said, this can be very graphically intensive, so you can scale this back to medium if you've got a lower end setup. For full screen anti-aliasing, I actually find that the best graphics and the best performance come from having it at level 5. Your experience may vary, so feel free to scale it back from here to level 3, and then level 1 as necessary. After this, we'll click on display and get into the nitty gritty. As you can see, all of my settings are essentially maxed because for us content creators, we want to make sure that we're conveying a game in its best possible state to the audience. For your case, you may find you want to drag some of these back to gain some extra frames and that's entirely your own prerogative. Feel free to start by copying all of these settings and seeing how your personal performance goes. That being said, if you want to gain some extra FPS, a good place to start is with the shadows, dragging those back to medium and dragging the shadow blur back because shadows tend to be some of the most graphically intensive options in just about any game. The reflections largely only apply on the wet races, so you don't need to worry so much about this unless you're racing in the rain quite a lot. Another big one you want to look at is the visible vehicles. Obviously, the more vehicles you have visible, the more intense the race is, the less pop in there is, but the more graphically intensive it is going to be for your computer. We'll move on from here to some settings that are less about the graphic quality and more about your personal experience. So Stabilize Horizon is a big one. If you have this completely off, it essentially determines how much your cockpit shakes versus how much the horizon or the world outside shakes. If you have it completely off, your cockpit will be solid and steady, but the outside world will shake quite a lot. And you'll find that if you're driving in a very high downforce car on a bumpy track at high speed, this can induce some pretty crazy motion sickness. So I would personally suggest having it at least at medium, if not at high, where I currently run it myself. For the HUD, the default HUD is the 397, however I've downloaded the SHQM HUD which you can get from the Steam Workshop. This gives you a few more options on what you want to see presented on the screen and is going to be a little bit closer to what the esports professionals actually run in R Factor 2. After this we of course go to the quintessential vertical FOV setting. In my experience, anywhere from the mid 30s to the mid 40s tends to give you the best results. Now of course this is going to depend on your specific monitor setup, on your resolution and how far away from the monitor you're sitting. And now we'll move on to getting our force feedback settings just right. We'll click on the calibrate section and of course begin by setting our force feedback type to wheel. We then move on to the quintessential smoothing section. The reason this section is so important is because R Factor 2 has an industry leading force feedback algorithm which arguably gives you too much detail. The smoothing section is our answer to that. We'll generally run smoothing anywhere between 1 and 6 depending on our personal preference. I tend to just split the difference and run it between about 2 and 3 depending on the car. The reason that we want to run smoothing rather than any onboard wheelbase interpolation setting is because coming out at the game level it has lower latency than operating at the hardware level. After this we'll move on to the car specific multiplier. You'll notice that this will default to 100% but for most cars this will have way too much clipping and simply be way too heavy robbing us of necessary detail. So we'll want to knock this back down to anywhere between about 40% to 70% on a per car basis giving us back those transient forces and all of those spikes in detail that we may be missing otherwise and of course also stop the wheelbase from trying to rip our arms off. After this we move on to the minimum steering torque. 
If you're running a regular gear-driven or belt-driven wheelbase, you'll want to run this anywhere between about 3% to 4%. This will boost the fine granular forces, the, the road detail and the curb detail in order to give you the forces you may be missing because you need to overcome the inertia of the motors. If like myself, you're running a direct-driven wheelbase, you want to run this at 0% always. After this, we'll move on to steering wheel range. For most case purposes, we can just check the tick down here of vehicle set and the game will adjust it on a per vehicle basis. If however you're running into any bugs which are causing this to not work properly, you can click this check mark here and set it yourself as necessary. After this, we move on to the view settings that are in the calibrate options. We want to do speed sensitivity, exaggerate yaw and look ahead at 0%. Now I personally like a little bit of look ahead because I race on a single screen and I tend to like the view looking into the apex as I turn the wheel. So you can see it closer to about 10% for me. You can adjust this as necessary for you, but if you're running a triple screen or VR, you're not going to need look ahead whatsoever. Beyond this, in the visual section we adjust the head physics to 0% and the head vibration to aerolinear. This essentially minimizes any crazy high speed vibrations which may cause us to race less effectively, especially if we like online competitive racing. Back at the main menu, assuming that we've bound all of our controls to our wheelbase, we're now ready to go to the session settings to set up our very first offline race against the AI. Some pretty important settings here which I'll run you through now. This is where you set the number of sessions. A fairly normal race weekend looks like one practice, one qualify, and one race. You can also include one warm up if you so wish. For time scale, this essentially talks about time compression. Normal is a really good starting point. A very, very key setting here is the flag rules. This will default to full. But what you want to do is set it to black only. Because of the AI currently functions, there are a few bugs in the game that will prevent you from finishing a race if you set this to full. So it's very, very important that you set this to black only for the time being. Fuel usage normal, mechanical failure normal, tire wear normal, simple whether it's scripted and damage multiplier to whatever you personally want. 100% being the most realistic option that's currently available in R-Factor 2. After this, we want to move on to setting up our AI settings. The number of AI drivers are of course the number of AI you're driving against on the grid. The AI strength is of course the difficulty of the AI. I would recommend defaulting this to 100% to begin with and adjusting on a per track and per car basis. The AI aggression and the AI limiter we're actually going to set in a config file after this so you don't need to worry about this just now. After this, we get on the per session settings. Some important things here, you can set the time scale on a per session level. Private practice essentially determines whether you're on the track by yourself or whether you're on the track with the full grid. Start time is self-explanatory and the amount of practice time is the amount of time that you get in that session in minutes. Now a very, very important setting here is the real road setting. R-Factor 2 has an industry leading real road system which essentially determines how rubbered in the track is depending on how many cars are driving on it, which lines they're taking and how long they're doing this for. You can start with a green track which gives you very very low levels of grip until it eventually rubbers in with more and more cars driving over the course of the weekend or you can start with a heavier track or a more saturated track to give you a better starting point. The real road time scale is essentially how quickly the track rubbers in based on how many cars are driving over it for how long. I tend to keep this at 15 times for the track to rubber in more quickly, but if you want to be fully realistic, you can just set this to normal. Moving on from here, we have the weather settings depending on the percentage of the session that you've gone through. So you can actually set up dynamic weather settings to your heart's content. And this all applies to every single session leading up to the race itself. The race having some slightly different options here, including the race start type. I tend to like fast rolling personally, and whether you're racing for laps or whether you're racing for time. Now that this is done, we want to move back. But instead of clicking race, which will get us straight into the race, we want to pull ourselves back one step and actually adjust some config level AI settings which would give us a way better offline race. After getting out of R-Factor 2, we're now back in the Steam menu. What we want to do is right click on R-Factor 2, go to Manage and Browse Local Files, then open the resulting folder, go to User Data, go to Player, and then go to Player.json, right click it and open it with a text editor such as WordPad. Now we want to hit Control F, type in Game Options, and Find Next. This will take us to the relevant options. Before we move on here, I want to thank Mark Pierce for giving us these suggestions as part of some of the AIW files that he's created for modded tracks in the past. I believe this transforms the AI racing experience in R-Factor. 
We want to begin by setting the AI aggression to 0.5, AI break grip usage to 0.9725, AI break power usage to 0.92, AI calibrate sample size 10, AI corner grip usage 0.97, AI formation by position to true, AI fuel malt 0.99, AI limiter to 0.4, AI logic override to zero, and probably the most important setting, AI mistakes to one. This allows for way more dynamic racing as the AI can actually make mistakes, overcook corner entries, lose the rear end of the car, and you can watch as they try to overtake each other and capitalize on these opportunities. It just creates way more dynamic racing, taking the R-Factor 2 AI from plainly infuriating to being almost industry leading. Beyond this, we move on to AI power calibration five, and then we move on to auto calibrate AI mode down at two. What this essentially deals with is allowing you to train the R Factor 2 AI to give you better racing faster. After this is done, make sure to hit save and get out of the file. So we've booted back into R Factor 2, pressed race, waited for the track to load, and this is the screen that greets us. We're in our first practice session. Now it's as important for you to let the AI practice as it is to let yourself practice. The more laps you give them, the better racing they'll give you in kind. When you feel content with the amount of practice you've had, you can simply click up here in the top left and go to next session, taking you to the qualifying session. In the qualifying session, it's very, very important that you give the AI a few qualifying laps so they can sort themselves out according to their respective skill order. The AI and R-Factor 2 are extremely trainable and they all have their own individual personalities. So you wanna make sure that the grid starts in the correct order. When you feel content with all of this and if you like the amount of rubber that's accrued on the road while you're running the practice and the qualification sessions and you don't wanna wait this long for that amount of rubber to accrue again, you can simply go to the events info section, click save real road and type in a name that you can always remember and you can always load up that state of real road on this track from here on out without waiting for the AI to rubber it in. Once we're happy with all that, we simply go up here, go to next session one more time and we're finally ready to race our first race against some really good, well-trained AI. While there are many more things to cover with R Factor 2, such as populating it with content and running the competition system, I'm hoping the few basic tips we've shared here today help you have a great first race against the AI. And that's it, guys. Thank you for tuning into our feature about R Factor 2. If you follow these simple steps, you should be good to have a great first experience with the game. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date with future content from Overtake. If you want to follow up more on R Factor 2, be sure to check out our Nitro Nights interview with Renee Butler. I'm Erman Hamidovich. Have a wonderful day.